setting in the wind. Setting is maybe the part of beach volleyball that requires the most amount of precision, but at the same time we play the sport outdoors where there's wind and stuff, and that's just not always the easiest combination to handle. What's up, I'm Alex from LearnBeachVolleyFast.com and this is another beach volleyball tutorial by me. So, setting in the wind is quite a big topic and we're not gonna have time to look into all of it in this video, but what I'm gonna give you in this video is some technique, maybe the most important technique to handle the ball in the wind, and some strategy which is based upon this technique. And once we combine this strategy and this technique on an intermediate level, this video alone and what you're gonna learn in this video can make you win games, just by applying this strategy and this technique. Okay, let's jump straight into it. But I have a small little personal dilemma. This court here, this background, is probably the most beautiful beach volleyball court I've been able to record a video on so far. And at the same time, I actually want to take you away from the court for a second for this first part of what we're going to talk about. Because I actually don't want you to be distracted by the court. Does that make sense? Okay, you can still have some pretty cool background. So, as I said, this is first going to be some technique and then we're going to use that technique into a strategy so obviously i have to tell the technique first so we're going to go into a little bit of a nerd mode uh, without the court because i actually want you to think about just my body versus the wind direction so actually now in reality the wind is coming from there and going this way uh, what i'm going to claim is that when our bodies are angled 90 degrees towards the wind direction it's going to be more difficult to set. And here's why. There's a couple of reasons. First of all, usually when people set, they have their feet sort of like this, which makes it easy to move backwards and forwards quickly, but sort of a little bit more difficult to move sideways. Secondly, if we use our platform to set the ball, this is what our platform looks like. And the sweet spot in the platform is actually taller this way than it is wide which means that it's, we basically, we can miss more this way and this way, rather than this way and this way. And the same goes for hand setting. It's possible to set the ball cleanly and legally from slightly in front of you, slightly behind you, slightly to the side, slightly to the other side. Like this is possible, but it's more difficult. And actually it's easier to set from in front of us, here, here, and a slightly behind us in our center line than it is to do these side sort of sets. So again, we're making it easier for ourselves if we can get the ball in our center line. So why does this matter? Well, basically the wind will move the ball. And the thing with the wind is that it can move the ball irrationally with like different speeds. All of a sudden it will attack you or slow down or whatever. So considering that, it's much better to have an irrational movement of the ball towards you than it is to the side of you, since we, we basically have a much easier time adapting this way than, than sideways. So all of this combined means that it will be easier to set the ball if the wind is coming straight at our face rather than to the side. And the stronger the wind, the more this effect will happen. And there might be even more reasons for why it's easier to set into the wind than from the side of the wind, but we don't necessarily need to overthink this right now. We can just uh, agree that that's the case and go and see what this means on the court. Okay, so here on the court, we're gonna look at some movement patterns on the court. So this is basically what it looks like when someone is setting in no wind situations. You basically, when you see that your partner is getting served, you sort of start dropping a little bit towards the net and see how the pass goes. And then once the pass has happened, you move where the ball is, you set it and, and it's a kill. And now that we know that we would rather set with uh, the wind in our face when we set, if there is a wind, well, we basically know that if the wind is coming from the right side of the court and it's a left side setter, like in this video, then we can basically use the same movement pattern. We can just move as if there was no wind because we end up looking to the right on the court and that's where the wind is coming from and we can set and it's all good. Now, sometimes in this wind situation, you actually wanna just back set and let the ball drift with the wind, but that's not for this lesson right here. So that was just a side note. Okay, so let's look at some other wind directions. And this is not the main wind direction that we're gonna look at in this video and that we're gonna learn about, but it's still quite interesting and it's quite controversial actually. So imagine that the wind is blowing from your back when you serve receive. That basically means that when you see that your partner is getting served, you can do the same drop step towards the net 
and then you can start moving towards the ball but you can actually make this little extra loop in the end so that you end up facing towards the court again before you set because then you're again setting against the wind but as i said this one is a little bit controversial and i'll actually talk a little bit more about that in a couple minutes another one that i'll talk more about in a couple minutes is the left side wind when the wind is basically blowing me in the back when I'm setting, if I'm a, the left side player. But at this moment, the only thing you need to know is that also in this wind direction, we're also dropping towards the net when we see our partner getting served. Okay, now it's finally time for the actually interesting stuff that we came here for, which is what happens when we have the headwind, when we have the wind in our face when we serve receive, which is supposed to give an advantage in beach volleyball because you can hit into the wind etc here with this wind if we drop the same way as we do for all the other sets a little bit towards the net and then we move to the ball we end up setting 90 degrees towards the wind usually so is there another way to do this yes there is and it looks like this According to me, this technique looks a little bit like two brothers or two soldiers that are sort of shoulder to shoulder and they're like ready to go into attack or something. And I actually need a name for this technique, so now I'll attempt to officially name this technique the two soldiers technique. But basically what you do in the two soldiers technique is that once you see that your partner is getting served, instead of dropping towards the net, you actually sort of drop towards your partner so that you end up sort of on the side of your partner or even slightly behind your partner. And once your partner passes the ball, then you move towards the ball and you end up facing into the wind as you set the ball. Now, the interesting part with this two soldiers technique is that basically the decision that you have to make to do this technique is timed differently than the decision for other setting in different wind direction techniques. So let me explain. Basically, all the other wind directions, you always drop towards the net at first. And then maybe afterwards, if the wind is in your back or whatever, you can make this little extra loop so that you set into the wind again. But basically what ties them together is that if you are doing something different, you are deciding to do this different thing quite a lot after your partner has passed the ball. But with the two soldiers method, you have to decide to do the two soldiers method already before your partner passes the ball. And here's the thing, usually, People play in somewhat windless conditions and even if they play in wind, most of the time they're going to be dropping towards the net. This means that most players are so used to always dropping towards the net that even if they know the two soldiers method, it's, it's so rare that they do it that they sometimes forget to do it when they should be doing it in the headwind. Okay, cool. We're almost at the point where we can go into the strategy part where we're going to tie all of this together. But before we go into that, I want to give you three more details that are good to know. Okay, so firstly, I said before that it's a little bit controversial when we have the tailwind and we can move here and do this sort of extra loop and set back into the court. Not everybody's going to like that. There's some reasons. One of the reasons is that you're basically facing your body this way and setting sort of that way, which not all partners like. And actually, to be completely honest, even if we are sideways and it's, the wind is coming that way and it's not super strong, we can sort of manage it. And anyway, if we just set it like this, we can sort of let the wind take the ball towards the net. So it's not that much of a problem. I would still recommend people to try it out and especially in strong winds use this technique but it's not like you always have to do it this way i would just say that it's good to know all the tools that you can use and then sort of decide depending on the situation wind strength etc etc your partner whatnot okay secondly i want to talk about the wind that blows in your back so if you're a left side player and the wind is coming from the left and your partner gets served so that you have to set basically this is an interesting case because this actually doesn't happen so often because the thing is that <laughs> if the wind is blowing from the left it's actually sort of stupid to serve the right side player because then this player can hit into the wind back into the wind onto the court and also the serve is going to be served slightly with a tailwind rather than a headwind so it's like the serve actually can go too far quite easily 
So this serve actually doesn't happen so often with smart players. They usually with the side wind serve into the other diagonal direction because then they're at least partly serving the ball into the wind. But anyway, let's say that we're playing against someone that actually does this serve, which is slightly stupid, but they're still doing it. What do we do as setters? Basically, it's quite unrealistic to try to turn around so that you can set the ball with the wind in your face. So you can actually just sort of think of this as a more difficult no wind set because you have the wind in your back, but you're not gonna do so much about this. So your sets are probably gonna be slightly more difficult to do and they might be worse, but the good news is that your hitter has an easier time because they can hit it into the wind. So this slightly worse set actually usually doesn't matter so much. I hope this makes sense. Basically, footwork wise, you don't need to do so much extra if the wind is in your back when you're setting. Just try to be careful with your set, try to make it as good as possible and just uh, trust that your partner can still do something good out of it. And the last point before we go into the strategy part is about the two soldiers technique again. So when I teach this technique to people in classes or, or coaching sessions or whatever, quite often I get some feedback which is there's some problems with this too. And yes, there are some problems with the two soldiers technique as well. First of all, it's kind of more difficult to see your partner who's passing. And actually I usually teach that the setter is slightly behind the passer, which basically means that the passer doesn't even see the setter as he or she is passing, which can feel sort of really weird. So basically don't do this with your partner if your partner has never experienced this before. You have to practice this beforehand so that your partner knows that nothing's wrong even if he cannot see you, the setter, as he is passing. But yes, people tend to feel sort of weird when they do this technique in the beginning. Second problem with this is sort of semi shanks into the left corner from the passer, at least if the passer is on the right side, because these are harder to reach when you're sort of next to the partner rather than in the middle of the court. Um, and yes, this is of course a problem, like some balls are gonna be more difficult, some balls are gonna be easier from the two soldiers technique. But anyway, if the wind is strong, you sort of wanna play small and low and close to your partner anyway, so the shanks to this corner shouldn't really happen so often. But to conclude, yes, there's some problems with the two soldiers technique, so you don't necessarily need to use it all of the time. Here it's the same with the setting into the court technique. The stronger the wind is, the more important it is. So here too, my tip is to learn the two soldiers technique, try it out with your partner, get used to it. But then in the actual games, it's sort of day to day how much wind there actually is do you need to use it or not. You just try the normal setting way out, dropping towards the net, see if it works or not. If it works, fine, just do that. If it doesn't work, do the two soldiers. Okay, final, let's tie this together into the strategy part. If there was any details I forgot about the technique, whatever, just comment below and we'll talk about those later. But for now, let's tie this together. So basically, in beach volleyball, you have an advantage when you have the headwind. You get to serve into the wind, you get to hit into the wind, whatnot, whatnot. And if you know the two brothers technique to set, you don't have problems setting either. Because the thing with the headwind is that it can bring the ball quite deep. And if you then serve receive from here and you don't get the ball super far forward and you don't know the two soldiers technique and you try to set it from here, you sort of end up trying to back set it into the wind and that's just trouble. You're just not gonna get the ball all the way to the net. So, <laughs> what you can do is basically to serve the opponent's high loopy serves into the baseline and just do the two soldiers technique yourself. And here's the thing, is that you wanna check in the warm-ups and sort of before, if the opponents seem to know about the two soldiers technique or not. And if you see that they are struggling with this, they are struggling with playing the good side in beach volleyball with the hand wind because they don't know how to set in that wind, then this is when you know that you go for the high loopy serves because then they're not gonna get the ball to the net and they're not gonna be able to attack properly. You get free balls and then you kill those. And then when you have the headwind, you use that headwind to the max because you know how to set in that wind. 
Hope this makes sense. All right, cool. I hope that this video has given you some new insights. And as I said before, if there's any details that I forgot about, comment in the comments below and we'll talk about them there. I hope that you have noticed that this was quite a detailed and in-depth beach volleyball tutorial and that there's maybe not too many others that are doing these sorts of tutorials. So whether this is the first video of me that you ever saw or you're a longtime follower, I know that if you watch this video this far, you want more of these kinds of video tutorials. So basically what you should do is you should help me grow this channel because the more this channel grows, the more means and possibilities I get to make these videos for you guys. There are actually incredible amounts of work to do, um, even though I don't know if people know, but they take a lot of time to do. Anyway, so some things that you can do is you can uh, share this video to some friends, some other players, because the more eyes this channel gets, the more it grows, whatever. Uh, you can also click the like button and you can comment on the video. Both of those help the YouTube algorithms and whatnot so that other people then discover the channel. You can also join my Facebook group where me and other followers of this project are all in. We have discussions and whatnot. You can ask questions. Uh, with like-minded people. I also have an email list that you should join because the email list is actually the first place that will get crucial updates about the Learn Beach Volvo or Fast project and those updates might be something that you don't want to miss. All right, cool. Thanks for this video and I hope I see you again soon.